Come on, clap your hands for the Lord. Come on, clap your hands for God. Amen. It's time for our service. Amen. Glory to God to give God to glory. If there are anyone outside, amen, tell them to come on in because it's church time. Amen. Glory to God. As we begin, amen, to give God the glory first. Before I pray, I thank God for the apostle and glory to God for his beautiful wife, the elect lady, Sister Barbara Horn. Come on, give God some glory. Come on, thank God for them on today. And those that are looking at us by Facebook and live stream, glory to God. It's church time. Hallelujah, somebody. Glory to God. Come on, clap your hands for the Lord. Amen. It's time to praise the Lord. It's time to lift up Jesus. Glory to God. As they're coming in, I want you to get your minds on God. I want you to get your mind on a blessing. I want to get your mind on a healing. Glory to God. Because it's time for it. Amen. Everybody stand to your feet if you can. Glory to God. Amen. As we begin to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We come today, God, to tell you thank you. We come to magnify you, God. We come to lift up your holy name, God. We know that you're the only great God. And we're saying move by your power today, God. In the name of Jesus, bless every soul that wanted to be here. Bless the soul that's on their way today, God. In the name of Jesus, bless the church like never before, God. In the name of Jesus, I see you healing right now, God. I see glory God breakthroughs are coming today God in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus bless our children on today God in the name of Jesus bless our loved one today God I know you healing right now God diabetes got to go sickle cell anemia got to go high blood pressure got to go in the name of Jesus headaches got to go in the name of Jesus bless on today God deliver on today God Get our minds right, God, because we come to have a good time. We come to praise you. Thank God for every missionary, every preacher. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we pray you bless this service, God. Every song to go up, bless the praise ministry. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, clap your hands for the Lord. Come on, give God some glory. Give God some glory. Glory! Give God some glory. He's worthy to be praised. And God, as we come today, we thank you. We thank you for everything you're doing. And we give you this glory. As we give you this glory. We give you this glory. We give you this praise. In the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you. For those that are looking at us on Facebook and live stream. Today is a great day is our pastoral day and those that are looking at me by the sound of facebook and live stream amen we have a great man of god and if you want to become a blessing you can see it on facebook on how you can become a blessing and live stream it's time to bless the man of god the bible said a labor is worthy of his hire the men of God have labored for years. And this day, this is just the day that we have chosen to bless the men of God. And if you hear me by the sound of Facebook or live stream, would, would you just think of the goodness of God and allow God that the men of God be blessed? If he bless you, won't you bless the men of God? We ask that in the name of Jesus. As we're getting ready to go in our praise and worship, amen. However, you want to become a blessing, you can in Jesus' name. Somebody clap your hands for the Lord one more time. Glory to God as we go into our praise and worship. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Can somebody Bless say your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Because God is truly worthy on this morning. And we are going to sing a song that everybody can join in and help us. It simply says, Come on and praise the Lord with me. So don't leave us up here hanging, praising God by ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we want everybody to get involved and lift up the name of Jesus because truly, He is worthy. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Praise the 
come dance before the Lord. Dance before the Lord. Dance before the Lord. for the Lord. Well, come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Shout hallelujah. What's the highest praise? I believe it's hallelujah. Let's give our praise singers a big hand clap on today. We thank God for them. Thank God for you that are here on this morning. Praise God. We just give God the glory and the praise for what he's doing and what he's about to do. You can be seated if you can on this morning. Amen. Praise God. Listen, I just want to kind of go over this. We still in the days of COVID. Amen. And this COVID that we're dealing with is sneaky. It's sneaky. So, and I said this in the beginning, and I have to keep on reiterating this. If you have any symptoms or anything like that, sniffles or coughing, make sure you keep your mask on. If you are symptom free, then, you know, uh, if you're comfortable without that mask, then you don't have to wear that mask. But for my protection and for your protection, if you have any symptoms at all, make sure that you come in here and mask up. Amen? That's why I have mine on. I have a little sniffles, but I'm protecting you. Amen? Because I don't want to uh, do anything to injure you. So that's what this is all about. But amen, listen, this COVID that we're dealing with is sneaky. You think it's gone and then it comes back up, it's just like the devil. You think the devil is gone and hear the devil come right back again. So you got to always be careful for nothing be on God. Amen? Amen. Now we have some people that's out graduation time. People are graduating high school, colleges and stuff like that. So we have some people out. But Jesus is still in the house. Amen. And thank God for those that... Even though they wasn't here, they've already contributed, already sent the offering in. And we just thank God for faithful people who are still supporting uh, the ministry. Um, I'm not going to prolong the time today. Amen. I want you to get your Bibles if you brought them. Hopefully you did. I'm talking about something today that I think that every preacher should talk about at one time or another. And that is about leaving God or walking away from God and how God feels about us walking away from him. The question is, if we leave, can we come back? We know God is a loving God. The question is, if we leave God, can we come back to God? Amen. And my message today is about backsliding and the Bible in the Old Testament talks about backsliding. And let me define what backsliding is. Backsliding is the action of relapsing into bad ways. Backsliding means to revert for, from being converted. You know, they have convertible cars, right? You're familiar with convertible cars when you let the top down. So when you let the top down, it's a convertible. It converts. But when you put the top back up, it, not, it don't become a convertible anymore. It reverts from a convertible to a 
uh, a vertebral, and that's what backsliding is. Conversion without staying converted becomes reverted. So backsliding is the action of relapsing into bad ways to revert from being converted. It means falling away, regression, going into the wrong direction spiritually. It means to pursue our own desires. Now again, the word backsliding is in the Old Testament. It's not even found in the New Testament. It's not found in the New Testament. But the New Testament deals with backsliding as falling away, as departing from the faith. It's the same as backsliding. Now, backsliding is not when you fall, you make a mistake, you know, you commit an act of sin. That don't mean you backslid. That means that you sin and you need to repent for, for it. The Bible said we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us. So just committing a sin or falling from, from where you was don't mean that you backslid. Backsliding means that you go back into the same old ways that God brought you from. The prodigal son is a good example of backsliding. He left his first love and went back into the dirt that he came from. That's when you backslide. When you walk away from God and you remain there and you continue to do the things that you used to do, you are backslidden. And I'm talking about the question, I want to deal with the question of, do all backsliders make it back? Because there is a comeback. We can come back. But the question is, do all backsliders make it back? Is it a possibility that some try to get back, but they can't get back? They want to get back, but they can't get back. So we're going to talk about that old today, and hopefully I can make it plain and simple that even the little children can understand the message. I've always learned not to use $5,000 words that children can't understand and that you got to break down four times before you can understand. And certainly want to use no Greek word because I don't even know Greek. You don't either. If I did use a Greek word, I have to break it down so you can use it anyway. So we're going to talk simple English. English, amen. All right, what scripture did I give you first? Hebrews, I'm not sure. My scripture's back there. Give me the first scripture that I gave you, and we're going to read, and then we're going to talk on today. I'm not sure if it's Hebrews or Jeremiah or, okay, give me Jeremiah 3. And 11. This is very important. Now, this is Old Testament. Again, Old Testament. And Jeremiah, the prophet, God has given him a word. And God's motive is always, because God knows this. God knows that his people are going to have a tendency to go back. He knew that. He already knows that. Amen. Because there's something in us. All of us, that every now and then, if it hadn't come to you yet, you just keep on living. There is something that's going to come to you that's telling you to give up, to throw in the towel, to walk away, to don't do it no more. I'm sick of this. There's something going to deal with all of us just like that. And God knows that. Amen. Amen. And we are no greater than Jesus. And Jesus had to deal with that. He even came across a time where he even thought about, and nothing wrong with thinking about it as long as you just don't do it. Jesus even thought about it. He said, Father, I can't even handle this. This, this is just too much. I can't do it. I, I just can't handle it. And Jesus went to the garden, began to pray, and he said, Father, he said, I cannot do this. He said, it's more than I can handle. He said, but it's not my will. It's not what I want. He said, but it's what you want me to do. And after that prayer, and I say all the time, prayer changes things. But sometimes prayer don't change things. Sometimes prayer changes you so you can deal with that thing. So after the prayer, Jesus got up and he went on to Calvary. And we know the story. He hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour. He went to the grave. He got up from there. 
but he had a mind at one time or another to go back, to, get, to give up, to quit, to throw the towel in. But can I, let me stop and say this. There is no time now for giving up. There's no time now for quitting. No matter how hard or difficult it might be, it won't be. Can you say this with me? Say it won't be like this always. Come on, you got to get that in your spirit. No matter how tough times are now, and tough times are tough, but no matter how tough times are now, it won't be like this always. Say it again. Say it won't be like this always. God eventually would turn things around and give us the strength that we need to go on if we just stay with him. Amen. But Jeremiah here is talking. He's preaching actually. He said, and the Lord said unto me, the backsliding Israel has justified herself more than treacherous Judah. What did that mean, Pastor? That means that some people think they have a reason or an excuse to backslide or to walk away from not just God. We're not just going to talk about God. We're talking about anything. They treat me bad on the job. I'm going to leave this place. He's not treating me right. I'm going to walk away from him. She's not being a good wife to me. I'm going to walk away from him. Some people are looking for excuses. The chicken ain't cooked right. My water was too hot in the bathtub. I'm leaving you. You know, people can look for an excuse. There are some men, some men and some ladies look for an excuse to get out in the street and party all night long. <laughs> Jeremiah said the people are treacherous and they're looking for something to justify their backsliding. I don't care how bad you've been treated in church. There is no reason for you to give up on the church. Amen. I said the church. I'm talking about God's church. Amen. You might have to move your membership somewhere else, but there is no excuse for giving up on God because of what people did to you in the church. But people have come with their guards up. There was a story that uh, I, I was told about this lady came to this church. And she had a discussion with the pastor's wife. And she started telling the pastor's wife about the church that she was in previously. Oh, they treated me bad. And, you know, they looked at me funny. And they wouldn't ever give me the correct answer. And they just, I just didn't feel comfortable in that church. And the pastor's wife let her go on and on and on, just like that. And when she got finished, the pastor's wife said this. She said, daughter, she said, I understand what you went through at that church. But she said, but the same thing that happened to you at that church probably is going to happen to you here. And the reason why things happen to some people is because you go some places looking for, you know, what's the old saying? If you go somewhere looking for trouble, you will find it. And there are sometimes you go to a place with a chip on your shoulder, expecting people to treat you a certain kind of a way. And guess what happened? You beat. Well, it might not happen that way, but you perceive that this is the same thing that they happened that happened to you at the other place. Amen. You know, some people are in more than one marriage, maybe a second marriage. And just because he did the checkbook wrong, you know, he asked for the checkbook and he took all the checkbook and took all your money when crack had crack party with it all night long with your checkbook. Now you found a man that loves you. Now you find somebody that's going to help you to do what God called you to do. And oh, he made a mistake by asking you for the checkbook. And the first thing you thought about is the last fella that asked you for your checkbook, took all your money, and went to crack party. So you cannot always just always have your guard up and looking for, somebody say excuses. Looking for an excuse to do something or be something just because somebody else did it to you before. It might not even happen like that anymore. Jeremiah said they're looking for an excuse to justify they're backsliding. Uh-huh. I'm preaching already. I'm preaching, reading, read preaching. God, he said, go to proclaim. This is what God told the man of God. Go to proclaim the word toward the north and say, this is what I want you to do. Tell them to come back. Amen. This is what God says. I don't care what they did. 
I don't care how they did me. He said, I want you to go tell them to come back. I want you to tell them to return. Thou backsliding Israel, said the Lord. And then he said, I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. And God's anger, God gets mad just like we do. But the Bible said God's anger endured just for a moment in his favor is life. Weeping endured for the night, but joy comes in the morning. God don't hold no grudges. We can't do God so bad until God hold a grudge on you. When you come, want to come back to God, God wants you to come back. He said, return, thou backsliding Israel, said the Lord, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you. For I am what? Merciful, said the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Uh-huh. Only acknowledge. See. I want you to come back. I'll let you come back. But first thing I want you to do is acknowledge. David said, Lord, I acknowledge my transgressions. He said, Lord, my sins are ever before me. David understood he can't hide from God. God sits high. He sees everything. So God, David said, I acknowledge my transgressions. My sins are ever before me. And Jeremiah is telling the people now, he said, only acknowledge your iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God. And has scattered thy way to the stranger under every green tree, and you have not obeyed my voice, said the Lord. Uh huh. Turn, oh, that word again, turn, oh, backsliding children, said the Lord. For I am what did he say? I am married to the backslider, I'm married unto you. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion because I'm married to you. Uh-huh. Last verse. And this is what he said, that every pastor should make the people of God aware. Amen. Because we, we're not all going to get it right all the time. So amen. amen. We're not going to get it right all the time. So God says, I'm going to give you pastors after my own heart and they're going to tell you how to get back to God when you stray away you know there's shepherds over in Israel and this might sound bad to some of us but there are shepherds over in Israel that lead sheep and you understand a sheep is almost defenseless or helpless amen a lion has a roar a tiger has a growl but a sheep don't have anything that can cause fear to be in any animal that's trying to destroy him. A wolf comes to a sheep, a lion can roar. But when a wolf comes to a sheep, a sheep can only do That's all a sheep can do. Now, who is afraid of a nobody a sheep don't have no fangs a sheep don't have sharp teeth matter of fact some sheep I might be wrong they have teeth almost like us <laughs> but the point of it is a sheep is defenseless and they depend upon the shepherd to protect them and it is said over in Israel that the sheep know the voice of the shepherd and they don't just follow any other shepherd that comes along. It's a certain language that the shepherds give to the sheep. And when the shepherd speaks to those sheep, those sheep will follow that shepherd because the sheep knows the voice of the shepherd. Now, there are some sheep that get out of line and they want to go their own way and go around and do their own thing. And it is said, now, I know this is cruel, but this is a lesson that the shepherd have to teach those sheep not to keep running off, getting out of, out of pocket. In other words, it is said that the shepherd take the leg, one leg of the sheep and snap it. And what that does, the shepherd now is doctoring and nourishing that sheep that he had to crack his leg. Because do you want a sheep with a cracked leg or do you want a sheep that's been ate up by a wolf? So now the shepherd is doctoring that sheep back 
to life and to strength. It is one thing that sheep don't learn. <laughs> don't you ever run off like that again because if the animals don't get you, the shepherd is going to break your leg. But it kept him alive. It kept him safe. And that's what God sent pastors to warn the people of God that if you do stray away, God will sometimes do whatever he have to do to try to get you back. But the question is always, can I come back? Will I make it back? Jeremiah said, God give you pastors after his own heart. They're going to feed you with knowledge and understanding and i want you to really understand this message on today do all backsliders make it back my next scripture is hebrews and this is a i don't want to say it's a scary scripture but it's a scripture that we all need to really understand that you just can't walk in and out on god like you want to you know sometimes if we're not careful we'll use god like we use a dish rag a face cloth see you don't wash your face every day. Amen. You wash your face. Well, you wash your face every day, but you don't use your towel all throughout the day. You just use your face cloth when you what? When you need it. Otherwise, that thing just setting up in there. And sometimes we use God just like a washcloth or like a spare tire, more or less. Amen. You never wash your... How many last time you armor all your, la your spare tire? <laughs> when last time you armor all your spare tire? You don't. You armor all the other four, but you leave that spare tie in the trunk. But soon as you need that spare tie, you go in there and you get it. You ain't took care of it. You ain't did nothing to, 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 to save it or salvage it. But now when you need it, you get it. And sometimes if we're not careful, we do God like that. We got God somewhere in the background. And the only time we call upon God is when we get in trouble. Amen. But the danger of it is, is that God, many times, he sits back and he watches us and he sees how we carry it out before we call upon him. And sometimes God loves us enough to make us wait. Amen. Hebrew, this is a scary uh, a scripture here. And, and when I first got saved, it, it came, I, I read it and I said, oh Lord, I said, what do this really mean? It says, therefore, leaving, that means you can leave the principles of God. Because God not going to make us just sit here or be here. You can walk away from God whenever you get ready. There's no change on you. But leaving the principles and the doctrines of Christ, he said, let us go on unto what? Perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith toward God. Of the doctrine of baptism. Now somebody asked me about being baptized today. And Overseer Nelson and I, we're getting that baptizing pool ready again for baptism because we do have some people to be baptized. But what this scripture is saying, don't lay the foundation of repentance over and over. That means that you don't just have to be baptized just every other week every other month, every other year. You have to make sure that you're going on to perfection. I might make some mistakes. I might fall down, but I'm not going to backslide and go back to where I have to go back into that water again. Because I'm telling you, if you backslide, if you go back into that sinful life, Revelation said you got to repent and do your first works over. That baptism that you got when you were 12 years old, you have snorted enough cocaine and smoked enough weed and drank enough wine and whiskey until it didn't drown that little old religion and salvation we had. So now we got to come to God again and do this thing over and go back down in the water one more time. But, but the Bible said don't just keep laying that foundation over and over. That's why I don't baptize children until they understand what baptism is all about. You get baptized when you understand what baptism is about. It's about being buried in that watery grave of baptism. And now when I get up, I'm a brand new person. I don't do the things I used to do. I left all of that in the water. And when that water go down in that drain, all my sins are going down in that drain with that water. And I don't have any need to get baptized again unless I walk back into that world and redo all the things that God has taken away from me. But he said, now leaving the principle of God and, 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 and the baptism of baptism and laying on of hands and resurrection of the dead 
and of eternal judgment. Remember what that just said. Go to this third verse. And this will we do if God permit. The fourth verse. For it is. What that word say? I-M-P-O-S-S-I-B-L-E. What that word spell? It is for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift. It is impossible. Do all backsliders make it back? For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Watch this. And have tasted the good word of God and the power of the world to come. Watch this. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. Remember what it says. It is impossible. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. Seeing they have crucified to themselves the son of God afresh. And put him to an open chain. Now I don't know how you see that. But this is one thing that for the 40 years that I've been saved. And I haven't walked away from God. This right here puts fear in my heart. Because the question is if I walk away can I come back? Would I make it back? When I first got saved in 1976 there was a young man that was saved before me. Fasting and praying and seeking God. He backslid. Left God. Went back on the corner where God found him at. It wasn't long after he had backslid. They found that same guy at the same place where God found him. With his throat cut from ear to ear. Died just like that. Did he want to come back? He probably did. But all backsliders will not make it back. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. It said that they put God to an open shame and that it might be a possibility that you might not be able to recover from that. That should make you never want to leave. That should make you want to stay no matter what comes or what goes. That's the song that they sang. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I've been wounded, but I'm going to stay right here in the army of the Lord. I've been talked about, but I'm still going to stay in the army of the Lord. Because if I leave, I might not make it back. I'm afraid to drink whiskey or smoke weed. Or I'm, a, I'm afraid to smoke a cigarette. Say amen. I had a cousin that died on a church's chicken bone in Waco. Amen. There are many ways, there's a thousand and one ways that we can lose our life when we walk away from the will of God. Don't you know there's safety in the arms of God? The Bible said the safest place in the whole wide world is in God's will. And why would anybody walk away from God? You know why? Just because the scripture I read before, because of some kind of excuse, Something to justify when I had a reason to go away. Well, you might not make it back, beloved. God might let you go out, but can you come back from that? It's impossible. The Bible said to be enlightened after you have tasted the heavenly goodness and the power of the world to come of the Holy Ghost. He said it's impossible for you to renew, be renewed unto repentance again. There's a man in the book of Kings, Saul. God ordained him, called him to be king. God chose him to be a king. And Saul was a king over Israel for 40 years. 40 years. And for 40 years, Saul was the king over Israel. But after two years, Saul disobeyed God. Didn't do what God told him to do. And God got angry at Saul just for two mistakes. Just two mistakes. Amen. Amen. How many in here have just made one mistake in your whole life? I know you didn't understand that. Because the majority of us, our mistakes probably labeled under infinity. Too many to count. But how would you like it if you messed up two times and God just totally snatched his spirit away from you? 
just two times. Saul did it twice, and God took his spirit away from him. And the Bible said he answered Saul no more just for those two things, that Saul, the two disobedience that Saul committed. God took his spirit away from him. But mind you, he was the king for 40 years. After two years, God left him. So, Pastor, what was he doing for 38 years? Just going through the motion. Just shouting and dancing but didn't feel nothing. Just singing and praying but didn't feel nothing. Empty, just performing. Putting on an act, just performing. Because God had left him a long time ago. And that's the danger of it. You might still be talking in a tongue. Or you might still be shouting and dancing. You still might be happy and singing. But God left a long time ago because you left him. And when the spirit of God departed from Saul, the Bible said the evil spirit from God troubled him because all backsliders don't make it back. And Saul did everything he could to try to make it back to God, but he never made it back to God. Jacob and Esau, the Bible said that Jacob uh, didn't steal it, but he talked Esau into giving him his birthright. Amen. It was meant for the elder Esau was supposed to inherit the birthright from his father. He's supposed to be the big man in charge. But because of his hunger, his flesh uh, convinced him to eat the porridge that, Joseph, that Jacob had. And Jacob gave him the porridge for his birthright. And Esau said, okay, I'll give you that old birthright. It don't mean nothing to me. And Jacob got the birthright and Esau did not have the birthright. And then when Esau wanted the birthright back, he could not get it because once God has taken something from you, it is not that easy for you to get it back. That's why when you lose your joy, it's not always that easy for you to get your joy back. That's why you got to hold on to your joy. When you lose your first love, it's not that easy for you to get your first love back. That's why you have to hold on to your first love, your determination, your dedication. You got to hold on to your faith. Jacob got the birthright, Esau lost it, and now Esau wanted it, but watch this, now he lost what he had. And he sought God, the Bible said in Hebrews, for, with tears. The Bible said he found no place for repentance. That means God didn't even hear him anymore. He asked God, the Bible said he saw it with tears, crying, God, forgive me, Lord God, for what I did. God did not forgive him. God didn't even hear him because he neglected what God had given him and gave it to somebody else. Let somebody else talk him out of what he had. <laughs> what he could, he wouldn't. Now he won't to, but he can't. Hallelujah. Final scripture in the book of St. John 6 and 60. Then I'm going to read these verses and then I'm going to talk to you just a little bit more and then I'm going to let you go. I just want you to hear this word today because some people are up under the impression they can just come to God, get what God has for them, and they just walk away from God when they get ready. It ain't like that. God is worse than the FBI, the CIA. Say amen. God is worse than the mafia. Say amen, somebody. You can't just come over here and just get God and God's goodness and think you're going to walk out there and be clean and fresh and ain't nothing going to bother you. God will hunt you in the club. You can backslide. Some of your backsliders know that. God will hunt you in the clubhouse. You done left God. You done got all the God good. And now you think you're going to go boogie woogie in the clubhouse. And my God, why are you in the boogie woogie clubhouse? And all the beating and the bobbing and just the booking. God is right in there looking at you. And every beep and every bop, God is in there too. Watching. Because he's married <laughs> to the backslider. He'll follow you into the hell hole to try to get you back. Say amen. He'll follow you to a place that, that nobody else would go, but God will follow you up in there. Not for you to enjoy yourself while you're there. God will follow you up in there so he can bring you up under conviction to come out of that place again and come back to him. Because once God saved you, God saved you for life. It's not no two or three days or two or three weeks or two or three years that God saves us. He saves us for life. I want you to be mine forever. God said he's a jealous God. He said jealous is my name. Amen. God will do worse than scratch up your car with a key. God will do worse than burn up your clothes and tie them all in a ball knot. Amen. God will do worse than that. 
I said, come on, say, God, God, do worse than putting something in your food. Now you're all sick and dying, pausing, a mother strict nine all in your food. God will do something worse than that because he said, I'm married to the backslide and I'm jealous. This is the final scripture because some people feel like that they can walk away from God and come back when they get ready. St. John 6 and 60, it says, many therefore of his disciples, when they heard these sayings, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Now, mind you, Jesus now is teaching 20,000 people in the wilderness. They followed him because he had something to give. Amen. He was a need meter. They knew Jesus was a man that could give them whatever their heart desired. He could heal them when they got sick. He could feed them when they got hungry. Amen. He was that kind of man. And they heard about and they followed him into a wilderness. And there was no food out there in that wilderness. But Jesus put them in that situation and gave him an opportunity to tell them what is required for following him. And when Jesus got them out there, they start, he started teaching them some hard things, pretty hard things. Start telling them what they had to do and what they could not do to serve him. And the Bible said many therefore of his disciples when they heard this said this is a hard saying who can hear it now this man is strict he's hard can I tell you God is a loving God he's a merciful God but God is strict there's some things that God demands from us that he wants from us that we have to give him or God will get angry at us but his angry is not forever but God will get angry but God is strict and some of God's saying is not Simple is not easy. Say, man, you think I you think I agree with everything in here? You think I like everything in here? And I've been living this life over forty years, but you think I like everything up in here? There's some things in here I wish I could just tear out. Say, man, but this is God's way. Say, man, this is God's word, and some of them are pretty hard. And what I try to do the best I can to make sure that I please God. But some of these things are, are, are difficult and nobody ever told us that the road was going to be easy. But God would never bring us anywhere that he cannot keep us. He'll never tell us to do anything and he would not give us the power to do it. His ways are not grievous. He said, come unto me. All you hard labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me because we're going to be yoked up with something. Huh? Before we came to God, we was yoked up on something. Something had us. Amen. But Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burdens are what? My burdens are light. But some sayings in this book are hard. It's not easy. Say amen. Ain't no point me lying to you. Amen. This ain't no cakewalk to sacrifice. Huh? To tell you, well, ain't nothing out there in the world derail you. You know, just leave that world. Ain't nothing out there. That's the biggest lie in the world. There's a lot out there in the world. There's a lot to offer out there in the world. The devil even told Jesus, I'll give you everything out here if you just worship me. Hmm? Some of the bling that these rappers are wearing, that ain't no glass. That's real stuff. Some of the money that we see that they flashing, that ain't no fake money. That's real money. Those are real cars that they drive. And say amen. So that is a blessing that we can get out there in the world, but it's not like God. And we have to be careful because what shall it profit a man or a woman to gain the whole world and lose their soul? I heard Denzel tell somebody the other day, say he ain't never seen an a, 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 a armored car following a hearse. Huh? He said the Egyptians tried it, and you know what happened to that? They stole all their money. Right? They tried to bury all the money with the Egyptians. You know what they did? Somebody found out where the bear was, went down there and got that money. Amen. Say amen. So only what we do for God, for Christ, is going to last while we're down here on this earth. But we got to be careful because the world has a lot to offer. But what shall it profit us to gain the world and lose our soul? This is hard. So, so this is hard. Say amen. But that's why you got to come and do because you want to do, not because somebody else wants you to do or somebody else is begging you to do. Or you're doing it because of somebody else. You have to want to do this. He said it's a hard saying. What you're saying now is hard. Now, these are not just the people who are following him. These are the disciples. These are boys. These boys have been hanging with him. 
This is a hard saying. Now, Jesus, you, you, you're saying something too hard, and now you're going to run the folk off. <laughs> you're going to run the folk off. Now, work a miracle or something, Jesus. Come on, heal somebody, raise somebody from the dead, because what you're saying now is going to run the people away. And this is what they said. Many of therefore of the disciples, when they had heard this said, this is a hard saying, who could hear it? Uh-huh. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, do thou offend, do, do this offend you? Now, now you mad at me and you've been following me for these years and I've been meeting your needs and helping you out and now you're offended because I said something? You know, don't you know this is a day and time, and I just have to say this, that we have to be careful with our words because people are easily offended by what we say and that's why we got to be careful I even know even from the pulpit because I can kill you from here or I can make you alive amen the, the tongue is set on five hell and when you say something you can't unsay it it's out there you can't shoot an arrow and say I'm going to take that arrow back you can't unshoot an arrow because the arrow's already gone so you got to be careful what the decisions a choices that you make because once you make them, then now you got to live with them. Huh? Hmm? Think about it before you get up on top of that 15 story building. I'm going to jump off of it and kill myself. I'm tired of living. I'm going to jump off of this building. All right, as soon as you make that first step off, ain't no use to think about trying to get back. <laughs> Huh? That first step that you make when you jump off of that building, you can't unstep it. Say amen. You can't unstep it. So you got to make sure the choices that we make, that we make those choices knowing that this is something I can live with. If I'm going to walk away from God, then I got to live like that. If I'm making that decision, I don't want to live for God, then that's the decision you made. Now suffer the consequences of that decision. Jesus knew that they was murmuring now all this time they with him but now they worrying about something he said now they offended say man now I'm not against helping people on the street and some of you all you have helped them too but what I do I am offended about is helping some of these young strong looking children that's on the street begging you know why it might not be all the time, but the majority of the time, you know what reason why they out there? Because they wouldn't do what their mom and daddy told them to do. they rebellious. Now they're going to get on the street and beg for money. Huh? Now my advice to you is go back home and do what your daddy and mama tell you to do. Then you have a place to stay. Huh? You have food to eat. You, you ain't got to worry about sleeping outside in the cold and in the rain. If you just do what your mama and daddy tell you to do. But my God, many times because we're offended by what somebody said, we'll leave and we have to suffer the consequences. Because once we leave, it's not that we can't come back. Not that we can't come back. The question is, do we feel guilty about coming back? Don't you know Judas could have been saved? Judas didn't have to kill himself. All Judas had to do was like Peter. Peter repented. He repented and God told them, he told Mary, he said, go tell all my disciples that walked off and left me. He said, go tell all them to meet me in Galilee and he called Peter by name. The reason why he called Peter by name because as bad as Peter done him, Peter never would have thought that he would ever want to see his face again. He, but he said, we're going to tell Peter to come back. And Peter came back and became one of the great apostles in the book of Acts. Judas could have did the same thing. But because of guilt. Because Judas knew he shouldn't have never did that in the first place. And because of guilt, it caused him not to come back and ask for mercy. Pride. Pride sometimes. All you got to do is just come back and repent and ask for mercy. God is a forgiving God. I don't care what it was that you did. I don't care how you did it, whatever you did to God. God is a merciful God. And all God wants you to do is come back and watch this and see if he can forgive you. Judas could have did it. He was guilty. He knew he had messed up. And he just did, couldn't face Oh my, 
He couldn't face Jesus, so he killed himself. Ain't this what the devil is trying to make us do now? He's trying to make people kill themselves. Don't you know how many suicides is going on about that? And I'm not going to take no poll because I guarantee you that there's somebody that's listening to me now, if not sitting up in here now, that the devil is trying to convince you because of what you did or what didn't happen to you, that there's no more reason for you to live. And you might as well take a bottle of pills or, or get a gun and blow your brains out or do something like that to kill yourself. But can I tell you, God is a merciful God and you can't do too bad for God to not to forgive you. The Bible said the hand of the Lord is a long arm and he can save you. I don't care how far you went down. God got a long arm can pick you back up. Don't you never give up on God. God will never almost never. I'm going to explain that. Almost never give up on us. Amen. They was offended because of what Jesus said and it bothered him. He said do this offend you? Read the next verse. He said, Dude, this, did I make you mad? You mean, this, you, wait a minute. I'm feeding you, I'm taking care of you. You gonna get mad at me? I'm gonna go to my room, I ain't gonna eat my dinner. You gonna get mad at me and not eat the dinner that I'm supplying you because I said something? You better eat and then go to your room. He said, what any of you shall see the Son of Man ascend where he was before, huh? Next scripture. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh. Prophet is nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. When you come to God's house and you hear the word, that's pumping life. We don't come to church just because we want to. I come because I have to. Say amen. I come because I have to. The Bible said when, when the unclean spirit goes out of a person, when God saved you for real and deliver you and cast out the demons, if there's demons in us, whatever it was that was in us and God saves us, the Bible said that same demon, that same devil, he don't just leave and go somewhere and forget all about us. The Bible said he walks around in the dry place, he's just over there just waiting. He's just over there just sitting around waiting for you to mess up or act like you don't want to be where you want to be. And the Bible said when he found that out, he'll come right back to the place where he left. This is what the Bible said, Matthew 12 and 43. He comes right back to the place where he left, but he don't come by himself. He'll come back, he'll bring seven more spirits worse than the one that we had. And don't you know I can't handle no seven demons worse than the, the ones that I had was worth running me crazy. You mean to tell me you can afford to have seven more worse than the one that you already had? No, you better stay close to God. Amen, you better stay close to God. And this is what he said. He said, my words are spirit. And the word that God gives us, it gives us strength. It gives us strength and gives us power to, out, to overcome the things that are coming against us. Because there's always going to be voices and spirits trying to pull us back into the place where we was. Amen. No matter how old you are, there's always going to be voices and spirits and sometimes people that's going to try to pull you back into the place where you was. You can't hang around a crackhead if crack is your problem. Amen. You trying to stop smoking cigarettes and you always around somebody blowing puff in your face. You got to get around people. My God, that, 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 that going in the same direction that you are is not going to tempt you because temptation is among all of us. And the Bible said Jesus was tempted in all parts, but yet he was without sin. He did not allow himself to get in the position where he was tempted. You can't go to the club and act like you're going to be saved inside the club because you know once you hear that music, once you hear that music, and once that thing go to bumping and banging, jamming, you're going to get up and do your thing like you always have. Come on, y'all talk to me now. So what you got to do, stay away from that kind of play so God won't put you in a position like that where you can be tempted above that which you are able. He said, you're offended. He said, my word is spirit. And when I come to the church house, I come, that word give me strength and give me you know, the word of God is going to teach us who we were and where we were and where God found us and how not to go back to where it was that God picked us up from. 64 verse, what it say? But there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believe not and who should betray him. Uh-huh. 
Watch this. And he said, therefore, said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it was given unto him of my father. None of us could be here today except God put something in us to be here. Well, wait a minute, Pastor. Didn't I get up this morning, put my own clothes on? Yeah. Didn't I get in the, my car and I needed some gas and I went and got that high price gas? Paid for it, frowning all the time, but I put gas in my car. Wasn't that me? Did I do that? Yes. Did I get in that car? Did I drive down 79 and come here to this restoration temple? Did I do that? Yeah. Parked on the parking lot? Yeah. Or in front of it? Yeah, I did that. Did I get out of my car, walked up in here, and sat down in a seat up in this church? Yes, I did that. But you couldn't have done none of that except God had given you the strength and the power to do it. That could have been a car to stop. You, could, you didn't have no money to buy no gas. Or you could have had, had head on a collision with somebody while you was trying to get here. But because God had you in mind and in his hand, God allowed you to get in your car, to drive your car to the church, to get out of your church and allow your legs to walk up in here and take a seat up in the house of God and hear the word of God. If God not had did that for you, you wouldn't be here right now. I don't know how you feel about it. I can't walk with without God. I can't talk without God. Mother, you can't walk without him holding your hand. If it was not for the Lord to wake us up this morning, we never would have got out of our bed. God would have, if it had not been for the Lord, we'd have had COVID and died a long time ago. But because God's spirit got in us and drawed us to the house of God, and I'm here to tell you if God drawed you to the house of God to his will, then God wants you to stay in his will, to stay in his place. If you gotta fight, you gotta fight to stay. If you gotta cry, you got to cry to stay. If you got to do whatever you got to do, you got to do it to stay with God. Can you raise your hand, somebody with me? Is that I came over here to stay and I'm going to stay till I die. He said, no man can come except the Father. Draw him. All right, read the next one. And listen at this. This is scary too. Because all those 20,000 people, Dre, that Jesus had fed the multitude, all 20,000 of them. You know, my Angelo said this. I don't know. I question it now. I do. She said, people will forget what you say, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. I ever heard her say that? I don't know about that now. Because there are some people you can do something for. I don't care what you do. I don't care how they feel. They'll still walk away from you when they're going to get tough. Say amen. I, can I get about three or four witnesses? Say amen. Okay, how you, they cried when you made them feel. <laughs> but they did like Oprah. They like Oprah and Ruth. When Oprah and Ruth's husband had died, Oprah and yeah, Ruth's husband had died, and Naomi was the mother-in-law. Her husband died. You know, that's why you can't follow behind, folks. You got to be careful. When you move into a certain area, pray about it before you just up and leave. Amen. Naomi's husband, because times was hard, he said, well, we're going to move from Bethlehem. We're going to move somewhere else. And he took his wife, he took his two daughters, and they two husbands, and they left a place because there was a little rough times there. But the problem was that was it wasn't God's will for them to go where they went. And when they went there, the Bible said Amimelech died. The father, he died. Malion and Chilion, the two girls' husbands, they died. Amen. And now they are here left just the women and the men that died on them. Left them all by themselves. They had no insurance policy or nothing. Just and died on them. Say amen. And Naomi told both of the girls, said, I don't have no more sons for you to marry. I don't have no more sons for you to marry. He said, now you can go on and leave me and do whatever it is that you want to do because you're free right now. But you know what Oprah said? Oprah said, okay. He said, I I I'm crying. And the Bible said she cried, but while she was crying, she was walking away. <laughs> I hate to leave you, man. Uh, uh, Naomi, I, I, I know how you feel, but I'll see you later. I can't stay. I got to go. But the Bible said that Ruth, Ruth told Naomi, he said, where you go, I'm going to go. 
She said, your God's going to be my God. She hung with her mother-in-law. She didn't just walk off because things got tough. She stayed right there. Come on, say man, somebody. That's what I'm telling you. It don't matter what you do for people in this day, in this season that we're living in now. You can't expect nothing to come back from there. You got to do it with a heavenly mind and do it because God is telling you to do it and expecting nothing in return because people will hurt your feelings, honey. They'll work. They'll hurt you. Amen. Jesus fed 20,000 people. And those 20,000 people now, they're thinking about, because of what he said, now they're thinking about walking away. But they walked away with a big old belly, though. They got full now. And they got full now. And from that time, this is it right here. I might be through after this. He said, from that time, many of his disciples or his followers, they what? They went back. This is the scary part. And the Bible said, read that with me. Start at and. And. That means that they never came back. That means they left, but they never came back. <laughs> they walked away, but they never returned. There are some situations that we can walk away from that we will never get back. There are some things that we leave we can never get back. There are some things that we leave we can never, we can never gain back. We, we, we lost them forever. They're gone. They walked away and they walked no more with Jesus. Father, I thank you for the word today. I thank you for the power of your word. I praise you, God, for the people that's listening today. I just pray that you would let the word, God, of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be accepted in thy sight. O oh, Lord, thy strength and my redeemer. In the book of St. Matthew's, the seventh chapter and the 21st and 23rd verse, you don't have to go there. But it tells us that everyone that comes is not going to stay. Amen. Praise God. And you know, COVID... And I'm saying this openly. COVID has changed everything about the church. Everything. We don't operate churches as we used to, as, as usual. It's, it's a whole different ball game now. Amen. It's not just our church. Churches are empty. Mega churches are not mega anymore. They're emptying out. Businesses have closed down. I mean, this COVID has affected people, and what the devil has done, he's taken a ride on this COVID, and what the COVID has done is vaccinated weak religious people with a weak case of religion. Amen. And not only that, but given them an excuse to do what they had in their heart to do in the first place. Say amen. But the Bible said that everybody that comes is not going to stay. That's a natural thing that we understand in a church. And that the majority of churches right now, what they are doing right now, they are in a rebuilding process. Rebuilding. You got to rebuild. You got to rebuild the faith of the people, the courage of the people, because people have lost their faith. They have lost their courage. The fear of God is not where it should be in the people's anymore. So that there's a rebuilding that we have to rebuild people because and there are some people that will make it back. There are some businesses that will spring back, but there are some businesses that are gone forever. They will never return. They are gone forever. They'll never come back. But there are some churches that will rebuild. There are some churches that will come back. They'll bounce back. Say amen, somebody. And that's what God is trying to tell us today. My God, you might walk away, but there is still a chance that you can come back to God and God will accept you back and not only accept you back but he'll do you like they did the prodigal son the prodigal father said this is my son that was dead but now he is alive and the father said okay now let's have a party now it's time to have a party because my son was dead but he made it back my God to the house of the Lord and I'm here to tell somebody here today everybody's not going to make it everybody's not going to survive the Bible said that there are some that's going to stand before God and say did we call did we cast out devils in your name did we speak in tongues in your name did we do did we do many mighty works in your name and jesus gonna look
look at them and said, I never knew who you were. Come on, because I'm telling you there's time where we can walk off and leave God and come back to God and God might not accept us back. Come on, say amen, somebody. It's impossible for those who once tasted the heavenly goodness of God and you walk away from that, you might not have the return that you think you're going to have. You might not have the, the blessings of God that you thought that you're going to have. That's why it's good to stay in your place. That's why it's good to stay with God. I don't care what come hell or high water. Stay with God. And you got to cry, stay with God. And you got to do whatever you got to do. Stay with God. Because the danger of walking away from God is you might not make it back. You might not. Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom. First Timothy 4 and 1. Say the spirit is speaking expressly in the latter times where we are right now. And that's what the COVID, that's what the devil and jumped on that COVID. He know these are the latter times. And he said in the latter time, he said some shall depart from the faith. He said some going to give heed to seducing spirit. And I'm here to tell you not only is they going to give heed to seducing spirit. Some people are going to give heed to other people. Paul told the Galatians, he said, you're doing good. Hmm? He said, you're doing good. You know, they always say, well, preacher's kids are the worst kind. It's not always that. Sometimes it's just the preacher's kids are bad at choosing friends. Right. Amen. We choose the wrong friends. Say amen. amen. But amen. Prodigal son, we always talk about him, but we never talk about the friends that he had. Right. Huh? The friends that he had that talked him into leaving what he had. Amen. Say amen. You know, folk will talk you out of a good house. Ain't they talk you away from a good man? Huh? All right, ladies, y'all better watch that. He'll talk you away from a good man. Next thing you know, she's riding with him. Come on now. Next thing you know, she, he's riding with her. <laughs> Say amen. The prodigal son, friends, talked him out of leaving a good house, a good home. It was strict. They didn't just let him do everything. And he let them talk him out of being that. And he had a little money with him. As long as you got a little money, you got some friends. How many know that? I set them up, Joe. The drinks are on me. I'm going to say amen. I'm buying it all. I'm out. It's all on me. But when your money run out, amen, most time when your money run out, then that's when your friends are going to run out. And when the prodigal son ran out of money, he didn't have nobody to help him. He didn't care about what people, how he made them feel. Now they don't care what they feel. They ain't got no time for him because he ain't got no money. And they left him. And the Bible said he winded up in the pig pen, eating slop in the pig slop. Down there eating the muck in the mouth, the things that the pig did eat. But the Bible said while he was down there, he thought about where he came from. He thought about where he was and how good he had it. My God, while he was down there eating the hog slop, he thought about where he was in his father's house. He had food to eat. He had a clothes to wear. He had a room that he could go to. Had AC in his room. Had a television. My God, had even video games up in there. And he allowed somebody to talk him out. And now he's out in the cold with nobody, ain't got no friends, and ain't got no money, ain't got nothing now. But the Bible said, wow, he was in that slop in that situation now because sometimes God puts you in a place where you can have nobody depend on but him. And now all his friends are left, and now the prodigal son, now he's down there in the hog slop now, eating the hog slop. And my God, the Bible said, while he was down there, what happened to him? He said, he started thinking about his father's house. He started thinking about all the good things that he once had at one time or another. Can I talk to some maybe backslider or talking or thinking about backslider? You ought to always remember what it used to be. It might not be like it needs to be right now, but think about the good days for the good times. Think about what God did for you last week or last year. Oh my God, maybe last two years. I always remember what God has done. It might not be looking so rosy right now. You might not feel the love bug rising up in your heart right now. You might not hear those sweet songs that you used to hear right now, but just hang on in there, honey, because this is the best place you can be. My God, once you leave this, it might not be a chance that you can make it back but the prodigal son heard the voice of Jesus said come unto me and rest lie down thou weary one lie down thou head upon my breath and the Bible said he came to himself you know what he said he said my God what am I doing here I got a better place at home and I'm here to tell somebody that the left God and walked away from God you got to remember how you felt when the Lord came into your life you got to remember what it felt like when the Lord lifts you up out of the muck 
walk in the miry clay. You got to remember what it felt like when God saved you. When he took at your hands and your hand looked new. You looked at your feet and your feet looked new too. You got to remember when you started to walk that time. You had a brand new walk. You had a brand new talk. And all those things that God did, you got to keep them fresh in your mind. That prodigal son remembered all the things that his father had. And he said, Y'all don't hear me. I said, He said, I'm going home. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, I'm going home. I'm going back to my father's house. I don't care what they're going to say about me. And I can imagine his friends was talking about him. You mean to tell me you're going to leave? Am I going to walk back into my walk back in the daddy house that beat you like a pup and talked about you? You couldn't do anything in your father's house. It kind of remind me of a story. Am I going to heard a story about, about a man? Am I going back in the country? You know how country folk were. And this boy did something wrong. And he had all his buddies sitting around watching. And his father came came along with a switch, a belt, and whooped him like he had stole something and beat him almost to a pub. And all his friends and buddies were sitting around and said, you mean to tell me you're going to take that from that man? I am not all that whooping. I wouldn't take that from nobody doing me like that. And then the boy stopped crying. Mm crying for a while and the boy said he said you don't know who that man is he said that man is my father he said that, my, that, that man he is my daddy and now all that property that you see you see all them thousand cattle that you see out there grazing in the grass you see all that land acres you see all the acres of land he said that belongs to that man and if I just do what that man tell me one day that man gonna leave here and that all that stuff is gonna belong to me. Y'all don't hear me. I'm here to tell you if we just do what God is telling us to do. One day somebody say one day we're going to inherit heaven. One day we're going to walk the streets of gold. One day we're going to have a crown upon our head. One day we're going to have golden shoes. One day we're going to have a long white robe. One day all my troubles will be over. One day I won't have to cry no more. Raise your hand somebody and say stay with the Lord. If you stay with God God will stay with you. Stand up on your feet and give God the praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've done it. Yeah. It shouldn't be that easy for the devil to talk us out. It shouldn't be that easy for the devil to, to trick us out. It shouldn't be that easy. Oh, we'll see you. Hey Amen. We done made it too easy for the devil now. Amen. To talk us away. But when backsliding is in your heart, it don't take a whole lot. Amen. Don't take a whole lot. Praise God. It don't take a whole lot. Don't allow the people that's around you to talk you out of what God is doing for you. Because it's a dangerous thing for when God gives up on you and said, I don't care how bad you want to come back. You can't make it back. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. That's an old Baptist song they sang. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other, no other help I, I know. Lord, if thou Withdraw thyself from me. Oh, where, where the shell I go. And while your head's about your mind is on Jesus, if you need something from the Lord, I want you to make your way to this altar. Oh, must ye. Just bear this cross alone and all, all the world go free. My loved brother, 
No, no, there. There's a cross for everyone. And I know there, there is a cross, glory, for me. Now everybody just raise your hand and say, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Come on, everybody. Praise God. I don't know about you, but through it all, I'm going to praise him. Praise God. Praise God. Can I get you to praise him? Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise him. Praise God. Praise God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace, glory. How sweet. Oh, how sweet the sound. He saved me. Oh, that saved. Saved the wreck. Glory. Just like me. Raise your hand and say, Lord, I was undone. I was a wreck. Oh, I was once lost. I was blind, oh, but now I can see, praise God, praise God, that's the Holy Ghost up on you there, that's it right there, that's the Holy Ghost, come on, can I get some prayers up in here today, that's the Holy Ghost right there, raise your hand, everybody just sang with praise God, praise God. Praise God, Jesus. Praise God. That's it. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Jesus. That's it, daughter. Just let it go. Let it go. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus. Point your hand. This way you get a prayer too. Oh, praise God. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to praise God. Oh, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Can I get everybody up in the house of God to put your hands together today and just thank God for your salvation if you're saved? Come on. I mean, put your hand if you're saved and you know you're saved and you know you're saved. Can I get you just to put your hands together and give God the praise that he deserves? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. I need to talk to somebody now that's watching me on Facebook, that's streaming. You're a backslider. Yes, you are. It's not that you just sinned, you messed up, but you have went way back into the place where God brought you from. It's time to come back. It's time to come and see if God will take you back. It's time to come and ask God for forgiveness and see if God will take you back. Because there's a chance that God might not take you back. So you can't wait till tomorrow. You got to do it today. You got to come today. You can't wait till tomorrow. You got to come today. Come and see if God will accept you back into his plan. The Bible said in Romans 1, 26 through 28, read it. It talked about how because they did not retain God and their knowledge, God turned them over to a reprobated mind. You don't want God to give up on you. And right now, God is pleading with you to come to him and give him your life and give him your heart. I don't care what you did, how you messed up. God willing to give you another chance. So you need to come and see if God will give you a second chance. Everybody put your hands together, please. Give God the praise. That right there. That right there.